Hey guys, it's good to see you back here on my Crafters Companion YouTube channel. I hope you are well and uh, I hope you're ready for another tutorial here. We're with this one. What we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the Kingfisher collection, but we're going to keep it really, really simple. So many times, of course, we talk about the paper pads, how you can just simply do a mat and layer with a sentiment and that's it. Job's done. You can still make really, really beautiful, but really, really simple cards. That's what we're going to do. We are going to incorporate our square matte and layer dies and we'll bring in one or two other elements from the Kingfisher collection. Strip it right back. Really simple. It's going to be a just for you or just a note card. So if you want to batch make them, of course, and it's about framing certain areas within, of course, the actual paper pad because they're absolutely beautiful paper pads. So therefore, before uh, we crack on, as always, thank you to everyone who has already subscribed to my Crafters Companion YouTube channel. For those that hit the bell notification, thank you very much. And then for those of you that also give me a thumbs up afterwards as well when it comes to each tutorial, thank you very much as well. Now, what I have done from the early days of my Crafters Companion YouTube channel, you'll have noticed when it comes to the actual uh, tutorials within the actual thumbnail icon it's just um i think it just says craig laird on youtube or something like that so where possible what i've done is i've now done what i do now and that is in the thumbnail put a picture of what we've made within that live so i've tried to do that as much as i can with all the previous uh, lives or tutorials that i've done a couple of them i i need to um re-photograph the finished example because i don't have them on my phone anymore but once i've done that i'll get them loaded but most of them are all there now when it comes to that uh, thumbnail icon you can see before you even start looking what we're going to be making so i've done that for you as well so, as I said, it is all about the Kingfisher collection. Well, I say it's all about the Kingfisher collection. We're just reining it in and just keeping it very, very simple and doing what I talk about quite a lot, and that is, of course, about framing. So, therefore, let's go up above and let's show you the uh, what we're going to be using. Now, I'm going to use... Excuse my glass mat because I've not cleaned it yet and really need to get around to, uh, of course, cleaning it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it within a 7x7 seven seven card blank. You can, of course, do this. This will just fit onto a 6x6. Six six. But I'm going to use 7x7, seven seven, white card and black card. These are the two card stocks that I'm going to be using. What I'm also going to be using, which is going to be the focus point, and that is our 12 by 12 Kingfisher collection. So that's what we are going to be uh, really focused on when it comes to the collection. And what we're also going to be using is we're going to be using the actual entwined wreath and also the sentiments, all occasion. I'm going to use the just a note, and that is all that I'm going to be using when it comes to making the card. I say that, actually. I'm going to add some dew drops to end, but it's all about, as well, the matte and layer dies, the nesting dies that we've done. Now, don't worry if you don't have these mats and layer dies. You can use any square or any shape nesting dies. It's just to give you the technique as to what we're going to be doing here. It's a little bit like your paramount so we're going to just take a section and then we're going to cut inside and we're going to build it up just ever so slightly just three layers but it really does make a focal point of that card so let's get started and let's choose actually i forgot although i've used the stamps i forgot we've got these as well um but i'm still going to use the stamp let's go this is the one i keep having my eye on because there's just something about that that I want to kind of frame when it comes to our card. So let's take that one out. And I'm going to move it to the side. Move my card blanks to the side. And we're going to go in with our matte and layer dies. Now I only need three of them. So I need the largest one. Or I'm going to use the largest one. You can use whichever ones that you want. But what I want is I want to kind of come along and then I want to frame a certain point within the actual um, image. So I'm going to go right round about there. So I've got, I'm actually going to come into the centre. I'm going to work backwards within a moment. I'll explain what I mean by that. So you can then choose however many layers that you want, frame layers. As I say, I just want three in total. So that's number one. 
So what I'm going to do, let's come in three. No, because there's not a lot of layer there. So let's come in four. Yeah, that'll, that'll be fine. Let's do four again. So that was one, two, three, four. If I bring that one in to here, like so. So is that, that's going to be, yeah, that's going to be a nice size to frame our Kingfisher that you can see here. So let's work backwards. I'm going to take, well, first and foremost, what I am going to have to do is roughly trim because it's not going to go through our die cutting machine. So therefore, I'm just going to, all that I've done there is I just want to make sure that I've given myself enough space. So let's move that out the way. And I'm just trimming it so that it's going to fit within my G2. So let's trim that. Now I can use a later time. So there we go. That's going to fit through my uh, G2 plates now. So this is where we're going to work backwards. So let's get that centre framed. So what I want to do is I want to see that full part of the Kingfisher. Don't worry about it's overlapping on its tail here because we're still going to do a little bit of matting layer. I'm going to go and I'm not using my low tack tape. I'm just going to use my stencil tape that I've got here. I'm just going to, although it's a stencil tape, a low tack stencil tape, sticks to of course. I'm just going to take a little bit off onto my jumper. Now I'm going to press to hold that in. So now I've got the main focal point done. So let's come in with our second largest that we've chosen. And all that I'm doing is I'm just going to eyeball. You can try and be more precise if you want, but drawing grids and that, I ain't. Or you can go on a bit of a wonk if you want. So let's get that lined up the best that we can as well. And then once I'm happy with that, let's see, yeah, I'm going to tape that down, tape that down, and then let's come in with our last one. And then we can start to tape that down as well. So let's tape that, press and press. Now, our mats and layer dies, it's a little bit in between with this one. Now, what I mean by that is I found that adding the magnetic sheet is a little bit too thick, but taking it out is a little bit too thin. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and meet in the middle. So let's pop that onto our plate. And I'm going to do frosted. Now I want a little bit extra thickness, not too much like the magnetic. So therefore I'm going to put my metal shim in instead and then my top plate. So that's still giving us the a, a little bit of thickness. Now I've not hooked the camera up, I'm just running it through my G2. So yeah, I just found with the magnetic shim, it's just a little bit too thick, too much pressure that I don't need. But I tried without the magnetic shim and it just wasn't quite cutting 100%. So therefore, let's go into the middle. Let's use that metal shim so that it's still giving it that little bit extra thickness. It's going to die cut a dream, but without that added pressure. So we've now got our layers. Let's move my plates out the way. And we've got our... Three layers. I don't need that, so that can go back in the pack later. And let me take these. So I'm just going to pop all these back here and take these off. And then we can then, of course, take this off. Now I'm going to use some black cardstock to frame. Now our matte and layer, matte and layer dies, the increments are just a little bit too thick for what I'm wanting. So that's why I'm only using them for my main layers. And the reason I've also cut in 
is because I could do this. Let's take... Uh, it was that one, wasn't it? Now, there we go. We just need to remember the way. So there's the tail there, there, and I think that was it, wasn't it? Yeah, there you go. There. Now, we could do what I'm away to do here, and we could essentially waste th three of these squares. You've got three sheets within the pad, so we could essentially waste three of them. Now, I don't want to waste three of them, so therefore, we're just going to cut into each one. It'll become apparent once again. If you're not quite sure what I'm meaning there, it will become apparent. So let's go in now with our guillotine. Now, our first one is six by six. I'm just double checking which it is. It's six by six. So let's take our black cardstock. And with my black cardstock, I'm going to come maybe about, I'm just coming to the left hand side of the six inch. So I'm essentially giving it about a, maybe about three mil matting layer. So if I pop that over the top, I'm giving myself about a three, three, three mil matting layer. So in essence, all the way around, it's about one, one and a half matting layer all the way around that you can see here. So that's our first one. Our next one that I used was four and a half. So let's do the same. Let's come just a few mils over the four and a half. And you can see there is our matting layer. Now you're not going to see that aperture inside because that black layer that we've just cut here is a little bit bigger than where we've taken that out of. So you're not going to see it. But what it's doing is it's just going to create an additional inner frame there. So this is what I mean. We could have cut that six by six and framed it. We could have taken a six by six of this, trimmed it down, framed it, and then done the same. But why waste all three when we can get three layers out of one image? And then with our actual hummingbird, that's two and a half inches. So let's do the same, just a couple of mil over two and a half. We're going to trim. And then we can see we've got that little square frame. I'm just going to trim that ever so slightly. Same with the opposite side. And then there we go. So if I bring these back in, just onto this bit of white cardstock, and just roughly frame, you'll see, and we'll neaten it up in a minute. It's just a nice way to add a little bit extra depth. Now, of course, you could have just cut that six by six, not cut two and number three, matte and layered it and it's still going to look beautiful but it's just giving it that extra depth you're not losing out the design because the design is still in flow with the layer we're just breaking it up with a little black shadow of a matte and a layer so i can set that out the way just there let's bring in you know what i'm like i always like to do my insert i'm just getting a bit of black cardstock Another bit of black card stock, just a black mat card that we can see. And then let's also, let's go back to my card black. So I'm just going to trim it slightly because it's just a little bit bigger than the size that it is. Now what I mean by that is 7 by 7 but it's just a few mils bigger than 7 by 7 Now I'd rather that than smaller. All my card blanks you guys know by now, they're from Sticks2, you'll find them on their website. So 7x7, seven seven. so let's take my black matte cardstock, and I'm going to cut it to 6 and a half by 6 and a half. Let's bring in my white cardstock, and let's cut 6 and a quarter by 6 and a quarter. I can add my sentiment in that, on my insert, at a later time. So that can go on the inside in a moment. And then I know the sentiment stamp that I'm going to use is that just a note. 
It's just a note. So let's take, you, if you know me as well, you know that I love banner, banner strips, banner sentiments. What I mean by that is, it might be a short sentiment, but I love a long stripped banner. So if I put that there, so what I'm wanting to see is, so yeah, that's longer than six inch. So let's cut that to six inch. And then that, I really only need the depth to be really quite shallow. So I'm going to use, this is where, use your guillotine to its advantage. Don't always just use the grid measurements. Use other elements, like the edge of the finger guard, the safety guard, the strips. And there, what I mean by that is where that metal strip ends, I'm going to line my cardstock up to there, press and cut. And then with my black one, it's also cut to six inch. And this time, instead of going up against the metal edge, I'm going to come where the end lines of the grid essentially ends. Cut. And then that's going to give me a perfect shallow black mat and layer. So you don't always just use the grid. Have a look and see what else grid wise you can use on your guillotine. So now that we've got that one, I really, really need to clean my glass mat, that's for sure. Let's go in with our stamping platform. Take our stamping platform and I want to get as central as I can. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Just checking the grids. And then let's go in with just a note. So just a note. I'm going to get as central as I can. I could have even got away with making that shallower. But that'll be fine. I'm going to... I'm going to go face on only because I'm just sticking my head in the way. You really don't want to see my head in the way. I just want to make sure that it's aligned, which it is. And then press. And for this, I'm going to use my water base only because I find, I don't know what it is, but I find you get a really crisp, clean, sharp impression when it comes to our waterproof ink pad. Now I'm not doing anything water based to it, but I just think you get a much cleaner, crisp, sharp image. So I can move that out the way, that out the way. Let's get my stamp. And then we can start to build the card. It's really that simple when it comes to the layers. Actually, there is one last bit that we do need to do. And that is take our entwined wreath. And also, just so we don't waste on cardstock, what we can do is let's use this base layer because no one's going to see it. So let's cut into that. And I'm going to just hold that down. And I'm going to then run that one through. Now there's a little bit extra detail in there, so I'm going to use my full plate configuration. So that's our base plate, and then it's our card or die, it's our frosted magnetic, and then top plate. Just so that we get that crisp, clean cut. Running that one out. And then that's then given us. Again, no one's going to see that because that will be all layered up together. But what we have got is we've got our entwined heart. And we'll have a, a, an entwined wreath. And you don't have to use it. What we will do is we'll have just a little bit of a... Put it here, put it there, just to let you see. But I know that I will. Es essentially, I will be using it. So let's go in and pop all of these little bitties out. And I just think the framework of it works well in that black. You can, of course, come along with any of your linen cardstock from the collection or any card, really. But I do just find that the black 
is going to set this off really, really nicely. And then that's all of our components. So let's take our choice of adhesive. Now for the actual framed matte and layers, I am going to use my wet glue, just it gives me that little bit extra wiggle, wiggle room, especially with it being a delicate, uh, delicate frame. Let's take that off and then I'm just going to marry that up to the side and press in. I may shorten it, I might and I might not. We'll just hang fire in a moment and see how we go. So there's our sentiment, just a note, and then let's bring in all of these. So let's bring in our insert first, and let's build our insert. Let's work our way around, like so. And I know I've talked about the colour of the matte layer of the insert. If you are doing a matte and layered insert, then I know I've talked about it in previous videos, but the only matte layer on the front that I've done is of course black, so then therefore my matte layer inside for my insert will be black. So let's take that off and take that off. I'm going to position that into there. Let's take that off. So this is also going to be good for if you want to start to get more use out of the paper pads. As I said at the start of this video, you know, I say it quite a lot, you know, simple matte and layer onto your card and that's it. That's all that you need to do. So that's why I thought let's actually, let's do that. Let's do a video where we do that. Now before we assemble them all together. Where I said earlier on in this video about, you don't even need to do the different layers in between, like the two or the three layer. What you could have done is simply, if we ignore the fact that I've cut these inner panels here, we could have kept that six by six with a black matte and layer, and then we could add our sentiment and even our entwined vine and that would still look lovely but we're wanting to add that bit of depth let's take these ones and say to give me that wiggle room i can find my glue which is behind my ipad i'm gonna just add my frame onto the black matte and layer using my tacky glue now whether you're using Collal tacky glue, or of course I'm using Sticks 2 tacky glue. Both of them, the quality is absolutely exceptional. So you need very, very little, very little. So either or, I would highly recommend put them into a little glue applicator. If you're using Collal's, then it comes in the larger bottle. So pop it into one of our little glue applicators. If you're using Sticks 2, then some of them, like this one here, comes already in the smaller applicator bottle. I do have some big bottles of sticks to glue, so all that I would do is decant it into there. Or of course I could still use my smaller blue eh, glue applicators. So again, a little scribble with our tacky glue. Pop that in, frame that and press, move that in, and then last but by no means least, let's go in with our main hummingbird. And let's add that on. Now I'm going to add very, very thin foam pads, like one mil foam pads. But you absolutely definitely do not need to do that with this one because you're still going to get that visual depth. Because
because of the black. So let's take our base layer and that one I'm going to keep on flat. So I'm going to take all the way round. So this is going to go on our card blank flat. So, let's make sure that's the right way, which it is. I'm just going to give that an additional burnish. Now, that would fit. So, that would fit bang on a 6x6. Six six. So, if you want a little bit of give, then I would maybe cut your card to 6 and a quarter by 6 and a quarter. But I've gone 7x7. Seven Let's take my foam. So again, it sticks to, but it's just a one mil foam. And we're working our way all the way around, creating that little bit of depth when it comes to the foam. Add that there. that one and then um, we're going to do the same with this one as well of course if you want to make it deeper it'll also look fab being quite deep with foam pads but i don't really want the depth to be kind of like the focal of the card move all that out of the way and then let's start to build this up Taking these off, let's just make sure all oh, that's nice and flat. And this is the prime example to show you and tell you about one of my pet peeves. And that is when people put foam pad on the back, on the centre, but don't take the back off. They say it's for stability. It is, but take it off because what can happen is if you don't take that off then you can start to get a little bit of bubbling within the middle because it's not stuck down it's creating stability but whether it's a warm room or a cold room what can happen is even though it's secure all the way around it can start to bow upwards so take the back and off of course it's personal preference you don't want to you don't have to you know the days of police aren't going to come at your door because you've not taken the back off but there is a good reason to um, take the back and off or a good explanation as to why you really should take the back and off so take that one and then that one and no one would know that these three images have been taken from that one bit of pattern paper that's been cut by six by six. Sentiment, this is what I mean by I love my banner strip sentiment. I've cut it to six by six. What you could do is you could cut it to the next level up, which was what, four by four. And in actual fact, I think I might do that. Yeah, four and a half by four and a half. I'm gonna do that. But what I'm gonna do, so at six inch, so let's cut half an inch. And then half an inch, so that takes me to five inch, and then a quarter of an inch, and a quarter of an inch. So I do a little bit at each side, little and often, just so it's symmetrical. Yeah, there we go, that's much better. Right across, and then if I bring this in, that we're going to frame our hummingbird you can see there what i'm going to do is let's have a little look so what i'm going to do is i'm going to snip this little bit away because i don't want to cover the hummingbird completely certainly not its head so if i take that out and do that little bit of snipping we can still see 
the hummingbird coming through the floral wreath and that's going to go through the center and it looks quite fab so therefore let's take our glue now if you want to do a drop shadow a white drop shadow that would work well as well taking into account the white floral i'm not going to though i'm going to keep that as it is I don't need to go right to the edges because it overlaps. So let's bring that back in. And I'm just going to hold down. And for our just to note, I'm going to put that also on one mill foam pad. So that can go through the back. Let's press that in. into here like so take away any little bit of glue and then we've got our beautiful just a note hummingbird and then to finish off i'm going to go in from some of our dew drops so i'm going to do one two three one two three Let's do the largest one there. Now, if you don't have a pre-done dew drops, you can, where that one went, oh, there goes on my hand. You can, if you've got our glossy highlights, then use them. You just need to let them dry, of course. Let's press that in and then one now you might see a little bit of tainted white come through which is of course just the glue but that will dry completely clear and then there we go if you want to do little bits onto the entwined wreath then you can't but there we go i talk about on crafters tv about taking a piece of the 12 by 12 cardstock simply framing it and popping it onto your card Main layer was six by six. Next layer was four and a half by four and a half. The next one was two and a half by two. So six by six, four and a half by four and a half, and two and a half by two and a half. From the Kingfisher collection, the 12 by 12 pad, we've used the Just to Note sentiment and twined wreath die. And with the mats and layers, we've cut in, creating that framework, finished off with a couple of dew drops that you can see just there. If I bring that in, added our insert that you can, of course, fill in as and or I will fill in as and when I know who I'm going to give it to. But just to note, with the Kingfisher, you can go in with your sparkle pens, you can go in with your glitter pens in there as well, your Stay Sticky glue, your glitters, you can go in with your gilding flakes as well. But really, really simple taking a bit of 12 by 12 and cutting it down and then doing the die cuts of course you can do it with the six by six pad you're just going to have smaller images so i would change the size of dies that you use and of course you could do that with any shape die it doesn't just have to be the square ones but i thought seeing as i talk about it quite a lot then let's show you what it looks like when we've done that so there we go let's bring that in just that little bit closer for you just to know and then even if you've got some of our little floral dyes, of course, our little floral dyes from our um, floral um, creations, that would look nice if you wanted to then add to it, of course. But there we go. That's another one really, really simple when it comes to that one. Then, of course, you can then take that idea, do as I've done here, or just run with your own creativity. But you're going to be able to do that with so many of your 12 by 12 papers as well. It doesn't necessarily have to have a focal. Like, I've chosen it so that the Kingfisher was in the centre. It doesn't have to be a focal whatsoever, because the focal can be that sentiment or whatever you choose to use or do so it doesn't have to have in an image as such it's just a nice way to use up your uh, papers and your paper pads certainly because i know many of you like myself have got loads and loads and loads and it's a good way to use them up if maybe there is more coming very very soon 
keep that quiet but there you go hopefully you enjoyed that one of course if you do ever make anything that you've seen and uh, followed on uh, my crafters companion youtube channel and you post them on social you're more than welcome to give me a tag it's always lovely to see uh, there we go until the next time i will see you again here on my crafters companion youtube channel thank you everyone that subscribes give me the thumbs up and then also hits that bell notification it really really is appreciated but until the next time we will see you later on bye